I am at a market or you buy them locally, they're going to be so much fresher. We'll just lay them down wherever, but we want to try to keep it in a single layer if we can. I've got a sprig of fresh oregano. I'm just going to throw that into the pot if we need to adjust our seasoning. We've got a big pot of soup, so we're going to add a tablespoon and a half or two tablespoons of salt. And that means that the core is starting to get woody and hard because it's more mature. And when that happens, we have to cut the core. We've got lots of syrup that's infused with that great kumquat flavor. And then you can see the actual kumquats are almost transparent. You can see right through them. So we're going to start today by talking about a spinach and acorn squash salad. So first thing we want to do is we want to cut our acorn squash. So I've just cut this in half right down the middle. And what I want to do is I just want to make some thin slices. I'm going to take my ends off first because that's going to make it a little easier to work with. And I'm just going to take a spoon and I'm going to scoop out my seeds and the membrane that's in there. I would like to take a minute and talk to you about knives and sharpening knives. You know, I've had the opportunity to cook at a lot of different people's houses and they always tell me, oh, we've got everything. Just come and cook and it'll be fine. And then you open that dreaded knife drawer and you see what's inside. And unfortunately, most people's knives at home are dull. They're just not sharp. Um, they're not maintained well. So let's take a second let's talk about a few different kinds of knives. Um, and let me just tell you how I maintain my knives and keep them sharp for everyday use. Well, I just um, got a part that sharpens and a part that hones. Honing is just straightening the edge. Sharpening is actually going to grind away a little bit of the metal when you do it. And so I use this every single morning on my knife and I do 10 passes. And all you have to do, because it's got two, two sharpening edges on it, and so it's already perfectly lined so you get the right angle and everything, I just go 10 passes on sharp quarters and then we're just going to cut it across. That pancetta has already started to release some of its fat and flavor and I can smell it browning in the pan. It smells really great and it's just going to look nicer in the soup. Okay, so I've got all of my vegetables. I'm going to add it right to the pot. It's taken about an hour and 15 minutes for our beans to get tender in our soup, but it looks like we're just about ready to go. You know, it makes me think of a couple things, especially about bean soups that I wanted to mention. First, is the amount of water that you put in the soup. Remember at the beginning we said it was going to be about eight cups of water to a pound of beans. So there we go. This is our Tuscan white bean soup. I'm going to start with salt. So for a pound of pork, we're going to add about two teaspoons of salt. Um, we're going to add a teaspoon and a half of sugar. The sugar is not really going to sweeten the sausage all that much. It's just adding a different flavor component that's kind of important. Even if so we've got our sausage meat, and like I said, we can cook it just like this. Um, but this works really well. I'm just going to take some, some regular plastic wrap and I'm just going to lay it out. We'll take a small portion of our sausage, maybe about half of it. So I'm doing about a half pound of sausage and I'm just loosely shaping it into a log. I'll spread it out. This is perfect for when you want to make links. Now, of course, these links aren't going to have casing on them, but they are uh, going to hold their shape perfectly well and you can use them, put them on the grill or anything you want. And I'm just going to pull my plastic wrap over and I'm just going to roll it and just kind of press it down. So All right, so like I said, we're making three soups today. The first soup, the white bean soup, is still cooking in the back and it's going to take an hour to two hours to cook. We've got the Italian sausage and cabbage soup that is going to take 30 minutes to an hour to cook. Let me show you one more soup and this is a nice quick one. This is something that you could make start to finish in 15 minutes um, and it's got to be one of the best soups around for this time of year, especially with a grilled cheese sandwich. It's a, just a simple tomato soup. Um, so we're I'm just going to give it a quick stir. I'm going to add a half cup of cream. Now this is optional. You don't have to add the cream, but it adds such a great richness to the soup that I really enjoy it in there. So since we're making all these great soups, let's talk about some garlic bread. Probably the perfect accompaniment to go with some of these. I'm going to start with some butter. I've got eight ounces of butter, a half a pound. And you know, I wanted to soften it up, so I just popped it in the microwave for 30 seconds and you can see that it, you know, melted a little bit and just softened up. It's going to make it nice and easy to work with, and so that's perfect. Microwave. And we'll just cut it into some nice big chunks. It's hot, so be careful. Let's put it in a bowl. Now that that's in the oven, we can work on our 
on our apples and pork. My pork is still browning back here and doing pretty good. Let's just go ahead and flip them over. I'll turn up my heat a little bit so I get better color. Perfect. Now we're going to do some apples. You know, take a piece of our pork and lay it down. Then I'm just going to take some of that onion and some of the juice. Just grab it and we'll drizzle it over the top. Give that a stir and give it a chance to incorporate. And then that's going to go into the oven. We're going to let it cook for about an hour and then we'll take it out and we'll add our vegetables. The reason is we don't want our vegetables to, uh, to overcook. So we want to give the meat about an hour's head start before we move forward. So our stracotta has been in the oven for about an hour and we're ready to add our vegetables. And so I want to take a second and talk to you about some root vegetables. So now root I'd like to make a pasta for you. This is called spaghetti al amatriciana. It's a classic Italian pasta that's perfect for fall and even winter time. Just a nice, rich, hearty tomato sauce. That looks perfect. I'm going to grab my pasta and just let it drain off. And we'll add it to the sauce. And the pasta is cooked all the way through, but it's got just a little bite left to it. I want to give it that last minute of cooking to cook in the sauce so that it picks up and soaks up some of those flavors. I'd like to make a vegetable side dish for you now that is actually the most popular thing in our restaurant. Um, and it's going to surprise you, but it's Brussels sprouts. Skimmer and try to get the sprouts out and leave some of the oil behind. We don't need all of that oil in here. And there we've got a perfect side dish for fall. Brussels sprouts that I know you will like. So now I've got my pound of kumquats that have boiled for 20 minutes. I'm going to add two cups of water and two cups of sugar, which seems like a lot of sugar, but remember we're making preserves. If we were using some other kind of citrus fruit, remember I said you could use oranges or lemons or whatever you wanted to use, we'd probably want to cut up those big fruits into smaller pieces before we continue. Some Italian sausage, I'm going to do some mushrooms and I'm going to do a red pepper. The first thing we want to do is cut up these vegetables and the meat and then get them uh, sauteing in the, in the pan. So we'll cut up our mushrooms and take my filling and just pour it over the top. We want to make sure that we pour it over the entire thing. Now the end pieces aren't going to be as attractive as the rest, but they taste just as good. So you can go ahead and eat those on your own and maybe not serve them to everybody. We'll lay those down. And then we'll cut our pistachio and apricot. 